Welcome to the Sober Podcast. I am your host, Jamie Brickhouse. And before we jump into the interview, we would like to take a moment to get the word out about one of our sister companies, Sober.com, the place for all things sober. We are expanding our reach and are in the midst of creating a virtual store specifically for those in sobriety and those looking help with addiction. So visit Sober.com today and see what's changed. Now for our sober celebrity guest today, Brian Hyman. Brian is an accomplished and certified yoga therapist with more than 13 years of personal recovery from addiction and over 11 years of professional experience, yoga classes, meditation sessions, and process groups at a prominent treatment center for addiction recovery in Southern California. He is here to discuss quieting the mind uh, and lead us in the first ever guided meditation on Sober Podcast. I can't wait for that. So everyone stay for the end. We're going to have a uh, a guided meditation about two minutes or so. Welcome, Brian. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Jamie. Thanks for having me. Would you tell our listeners about how you got started in the practice of meditation? Sure. I had about uh, 14 months of sobriety. I've been sober almost 14 years now. Yeah. Early on. Me too. I, I'm, about, I'm 14 plus. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Class of 2009. I'm class of 2008. So <laughs> end of the year though. <laughs> yeah. It's just an amazing journey. So I went through the steps. I, I got into a 12 step program, went through the steps with a sponsor, went to meetings. I did all the things that were, that are suggested. However, around 14 months of sobriety, uh, I was feeling a little edgy, a little itchy. I had a lot of problems with focus and concentration and, mm -hmm. and just a lot of old thoughts and limiting beliefs and conditioned behaviors and an old timer that I knew he said how's your PM? I said I don't know what that is what are you talking <laughs> about he said your prayer and meditation uh -huh. I said oh it's good I do what it says in the big book um, and he says well tell me what you do I said oh I, I pray in the morning and then you know I say what it says on that page and and he said what you're not meditating how's your meditation I said, well, that's it. Isn't it all wrapped up together? He said, no. Step 11 says, saw through prayer and meditation. Right, he says, right. I think what works best is you can do them together, but they are two separate things. And it really, a light bulb went off. And so I started to meditate. Uh, for me, it was very challenging, very difficult. Yeah. What happened was... Uh, my and I, I'm, I'm happy to, that we're talking about this be, for me personally, because I uh am an intermittent uh meditator you know i i do it you know off and on and right now i'm on an off cycle um so i'm always happy to to hear from someone uh from an expert and and to get tips about how to get back into it so anyway go on oh sure yeah consistency really helps and that was part yeah. of how i started um it was a great i'm glad you mentioned that because if i did it once or twice early on i'm not sure if it would have stuck Right. So what happened was most of the, the amazing things that happened in my early recovery, I did with other people I was getting sober with, uh, the buddy system, if you will. We did yep. it together. You know, we have fellowship. We have brotherhood, sisterhood. We, we do things together. So I was going to try meditation. And I called a friend of mine who I got sober with. I said, do you meditate? And he said, no. I said, do you want to try it together? How about this? Every morning we'll We'll do four minutes. We'll do it next week, Monday through Friday. And we'll just check in with each other every morning and we'll call each other and we'll see how it went. And he said, sure, why not? I'll give it a try because he didn't have a practice either. And so day one, I sat there with my flip phone. So this is back in 2010 or so. And, and yeah, before yeah. smartphones, I think smartphones were out. I just didn't have one. So I had mm -hmm. my flip phone. And I sat <laughs> next to me. I found the alarm. And I set it for four minutes and I sat there like I thought people are supposed to sit in meditation, which, you know, things I saw in movies with the legs crossed and the first finger and thumb together and the eyes closed. And I just tried to meditate and I looked over at the alarm and about 30 seconds had gone by and I couldn't <laughs> believe I, it felt like two hours and yeah. I tried again yeah. to meditate. I was making a whole big deal out of it. And then I looked again and one minute went by and I thought, oh my gosh, I can't even sit with myself for four minutes. Uh, I finally made it through that meditation. Um, 
It was painful. What mm-hmm. happened was it felt like I was in a dark closet with a madman wielding a machete. That's what it felt like going into my head by myself. You know how we say sometimes in recovery, like you don't want to go up here without a, you know, uh, uh, without a bodyguard. It's a dangerous right, right. neighborhood. <laughs> it, it is a dangerous neighborhood. Absolutely. Um, so I started to go into that neighborhood. And by the end of the week, what happened was um, because I kept going, like we talked about being consistent, I didn't give up on the first or second or third or fourth day, but day five, something amazing happened. I sat there and in the meditation, I heard this really weird noise and I couldn't figure it out. But at the same time, I really wasn't too concerned because it was just, I was in a, a, a it was a peaceful noise and I was actually in sort of a peaceful place. And then in the meditation, I realized, I think that's the alarm. And I opened my eyes and I looked, it was the alarm. I had made it through the entire four minutes and I had no idea that time had passed. I had transcended space and time. I went to this magical place in my meditation and being an addict, being an alcoholic, you know, when I want, when I have something that makes Mm -hmm. me feel good, I want more of it. So uh, that meditation where I made it to the four minutes, it felt so good. My next thought was, I want more of that. I'm going to chase after that. And that's what I've been doing ever since. So I haven't missed a day in the last, you know, 13 years or so. Um, Amazing. Yeah, I think, I mean, and I think you, you know, with, with everything, uh, uh, whether it's in this program or, or anything, any um, endeavor in life, it's about um, showing up in consistency, you know, right. Right. Um, Which, which I haven't done before. Um, What are with meditation that is, what are some of the benefits of meditation? And by the way, when you first started talking about your experience, you uh, you said you had um, what was there uh, limiting thoughts or or uh, uh, limiting beliefs? Limiting beliefs, right, right, which I think is something we all want to get rid of. So, what are some of the benefits of meditation? Well, that's the that's the, that's the interesting thing. I wasn't sure, but I did know originally it, it it felt peaceful. That was the first thing, and then I started to realize since you mentioned quieting the mind, that's what happened. Because around the same time I started exploring meditation, I had just become a yoga teacher, and they are, are very similar. They're parallel paths. They go together. So the main purpose of yoga I've been taught is to quiet the mind, and meditation is very similar. So some of the benefits were. I started to identify some of those dark shadows, that madman in my mind and, and realize, you know, like as little kids were told about the boogeyman yeah. you know, under the bed, there's a, there's a monster, there's a boogeyman. You look and there's nobody there. It was all in your mind. And that's what I realized in meditation was these limiting beliefs, these, these old stories I used to tell myself that just weren't true anymore. These fears, all kinds of attachments, expectations, uh, emotions and feelings that have been unprocessed. That's what we're sitting with. And some of the benefits are you get a chance to be in a safe place uh, mentally Mm -hmm. to process on your own. Um, And this is just my experience. Other people may have other experiences with meditation, but I believe some of the benefits that I've experienced personally is absolutely a quieting of the mind, um, a cessation of thoughts. Uh, there's, There's connection to memories. We also get a chance to connect the dots. In meditation, all of a sudden, I, I've had experiences where I have thoughts, something like, I should call my father. It's been a, a, a while. I haven't talked to him. I, I think I should call him. And then I'll call him. And then all of a sudden, it was the perfect timing. He had something he needed to talk about. And it, it, something that synchronicity, those types yeah. of things happen when the mind is quiet enough. Um, another thing that came to me once in meditation was uh, I felt that I didn't want to be alone in my life anymore. And I really sat with that thought and I, I was able to figure out where it came from back in my history, my family of origin, relationships as a kid, friendships. And then I brought those things into the present moment and was able to alter the way that I engage with others in the world now so that I, I won't end up in that place where that, that, that loneliness was there in my mind. So it's, right, so you altered, you altered the way you, you, you altered your thinking, right? Exactly. Yeah. It, in it meditation, the behavior. Yeah. It's almost like you go into this, this, um, this safe space, almost like a laboratory, like a scientist would go into a lab and do experiments in meditation in, in a, 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 a mindful or spiritual way. We can do something very similar is, is kind of pull apart some of our ideas, pull apart some of the stories, pull apart some of the, the fears sit with them, transform them, 
let them go, release them. It's interesting because I've done a lot of talk therapy as, as a patient. I've talked to a lot of therapists. Mm-hmm. I work at a treatment center. So I've, I've facilitated quite a few groups over the last uh, dozen years. Um, but I think the personal healing and transformation, and in our case, recovery that we're looking for, meditation is is at the top of my list. I, I joke sometimes that um, if I were given a choice to be stranded on an island and I, would, I could either have food or my meditation practice, um, I, I, I tell people, it looks like I'm going to lose some weight because I can do without food. And <laughs> I don't want to do without my meditation because I'm going to start to uh, unwind pretty quickly up here and it won't be pretty. Yeah, well, yeah, in that uh, the twelve step big book, it says, uh, you know, we'd sooner when you once you get into the practice, you know, we'd sooner go out w- without food and water than than um, meditation and prayer. Exactly. What um, practices do you use personally to quiet your mind on a day to day basis? And also tied in with that question is, do you always meditate at the same time every day? Those are great questions. Yeah, a lot of people want to start a practice or or pick up a practice where they left off. And like we talked about consistency, building habits can be an issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, I still use that four minute benchmark that I had started with, which is so funny after all these years. Um, if it if it if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So that four minutes where I sat with my little flip phone, that took me where I needed to go. So these yeah. days. I start, I do meditate in the morning, four, five, six, seven, eight minutes. I mm-hmm. sit, um, I focus on my breath. I close my eyes. I have a personal mantra. I literally just say to myself, inhale, present moment. Exhale, wonderful moment. That's to anchor myself in the present moment in the here and now so I don't get lost thinking about what happened yesterday or what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. So my meditation is just present moment, wonderful moment, focusing on breath. I do that for four or five minutes, and then I start my day. I do it again in the afternoon to sort of get a kind of an afternoon reset or pick me up, and then I do it at night, and I also add on a gratitude list. Um, so three times a day. Uh, yeah, that's minutes. right. You know, okay, you and you uh, kind of answered a question that was on my mind, which is um, when I hear about people who, you know, like, oh, the first thing I do is meditate in the morning, and which I think is it sounds great, um, and, and I still think it sounds great. But it's the middle of the day or, or in the in the end of the day, which, you know, when things are when you're in your day and things are chaotic and stressful and, um, you know, and, and you're under pressure. I think that's a great time to like, you know, take a take a break um, and just stop everything um, for one minute, four minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes. Um, yeah. So you, you're kind of it sounds like you're doing that. Yeah, I started that, I'm not sure how many years ago, but I, I realized that the morning meditation, just like if I eat something at 8 a.m., I'm going to be hungry again by 2 p.m. I'm going to have to eat again. So if I meditate at, let's say, 5 or 6 a.m., by 1 or 2 p.m., I, I, I need more nourishment. I need more of that meditation. That morning meditation is not going to nourish me throughout the next 12 or 16 hours. I have a long day ahead of me. So I need that snack in the afternoon, if you will, that, that yeah, extra meditation. Yeah. I was in um, Istanbul and, you know, um, and they have the, um, uh, the a few months ago and, and they have the call to prayer, you know, that happens several times a day. And, um, and I thought, oh, that's, I mean, I know it's, it's, you know, the, the, those who observe are, are praying, they're not meditating, but I thought, oh, what a great, you know, wouldn't that be wonderful if we all had, we all had agreed upon, you know, in, you know, in this country or in the world, just, you know, a moment or two set moments in every day where everyone just stopped what they were doing and either prayed or meditated or a little bit of both or just zenned out, you know, and everyone agreed to to do that. You know, I mean, that's, uh, I I know that's not going to happen, but, you know, we can make it happen for ourselves. Yeah, Yeah. I had to carve it out for myself. I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I, what I do for for work, I've been offered different opportunities to do more work at different times of the day, but they would cut into those times that I've set aside that I need to meditate. So there's been times where I've, I've um, uh, not taken on more work or, or more jobs or other things that would interfere with that time. So I've 
I've really had to be vigilant to leave those times in the morning to do my meditation in the afternoon and, and in the evening. Now, there things come up where I can't hit those marks throughout the day. Yeah. But for the most part, I, I try to stay um, uh, on task with those <laughs> with those with those times. It's I heard so a teacher years ago. He said um, it's our appointment with God or a higher power, however somebody would like to interpret that. And I thought that's a really beautiful way to look at it is when I sit down to meditate, it's like I have, that. this is a very important appointment that I want to keep. I don't want to miss it. I may not get a rain check. So I want to make sure it's, it's a very important moment. So that's what I think of sometimes when I meditate is I'm going to go sit with my higher power. And, um, and, and that's the time that we have together. So that's a great way to think of it. And speaking about taking um, breaks, um, this is not a meditation break. <laughs> this is a commercial break. So um, stick with us, everybody, and we'll be back in just a few seconds. Hi, I'm Sonia, the founder of Everbloom. We help you change your relationship with alcohol through connection and conversation. We provide small group meetings where you can share your story and get the encouragement and support you need to achieve your goals. Whatever your goals are, we're a judgment-free space. You can find us at joineverbloom.com, B-L-U-M-E, and try us out with a free meeting. And we are back with Brian discussing um, how to quiet the mind with meditation. How has meditation affected your own sobriety? It's been crucial. It's been there, as I mentioned earlier, since I had about 14 months, and I... I, I find a lot of answers in my meditations that I can't find through journaling or talking to my sponsor or, or talking with other people in recovery or, or other people in general. It's really that quiet time where I get a chance to see things clearly. Um, mm -hmm. There's a great word in the yoga tradition in Sanskrit, it's prajna. Prajna means deep insight or wisdom. And these are kind of like little pearls of wisdom or little nuggets that we get in meditation. So sometimes if I can't figure out the answer to something where I feel stressed or anxious or nervous yeah. or a fear comes up, I'll, I'll, I'll remove myself from that situation, whatever it is, and I'll go somewhere and I'll just sit and close my eyes and focus on my breath and see if something comes up, something I couldn't see when I was in the middle of the problem or situation. And, um, Almost every time something does come up. If not, at least when I come back to the situation, I'm definitely a lot calmer because I took that little that little pause. So it's neat. It's a little. I think there's there's a lot of riches or jewels to be found in our meditation sessions if we're willing to to do the mining to get in there and, and dig around. Yeah, um, and you answered part of my next question about you know when we get caught up in the in the pressures and hustle bustle of of life. Um, what are some more suggestions other than than what you just said about um, how folks can um, who may not have experience with quieting their minds? What are what are some of the tips? Um, and also maybe some of the tips of. Um, how to focus while you're meditating, you know, cause so many people, they also get afraid to, uh, to try meditation, you know, cause, Oh, I'm not doing it right. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about my to-do list and I'm not meditating good enough, well enough and good. And, you know, and, and I, I focus on the sounds that I just heard outside my window and it throws me off and then I can't do it. You know? So I know that was a lot that I threw at you, but. Well, fortunately, uh, when I started to research and read a little bit about meditation, I heard there's different kinds of meditations. There's walking meditation. There's mm -hmm. um, that surfing or hiking can be a meditation. That painting can be a type of meditation, even playing music. And my first thought was, wait a minute, that's, is that right? Is that true? I thought you had to <laughs> sit in cross-legged position with your hands on your knees. I had no idea there was this whole world of possibility Meditation can be anything where you get a chance to look deeply. Uh, the way I was taught years ago, and I've studied different types of meditations, and I take a little bit from here and a little bit from there, but I was taught uh, one teaching specifically that comes to mind is meditation is is calm, abiding, it's to stop. Mm -hmm. And and the other half of that equation is to look deeply. So whatever is going to allow you to stop, um, this is called shamatha in Sanskrit, Okay. And uh, the calm abiding is Vipassana. I think a lot of us have heard of Vipassana type of meditation. 
these two go together. So anything that allows you to stop and look deeply, that's calm, abiding, whatever allows you to stay calm and still so that you can look deeply within. And then all of a sudden, this the, 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 it's a smorgasbord. The whole world opens up. So gardening can be a meditation, um, uh, playing with children, um, playing with your pets, um, any kind of activity that you find cooking. joy. Cooking, Baking. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, cooking, sewing, um, designing, you know, uh, your house or, or, or cleaning, whatever it might be. I did. It, I did it while getting a manicure once. <laughs> um, I guess I was, uh, you know, I mean, I heard someone, you know, uh, in a in a in a sober group talk about, you know, that they meditated while doing something else, kind of like what you're just saying. And and the next day I was having a manicure uh, and and which I kind of zone out anyway during that, uh, you know, and, and let myself enjoy it and, and relax. And I was like, oh, I'm going to meditate right now. Um, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, I, that was the first step I took to non-traditional or what we think of as traditional meditation. And it's it's so cool because a lot of us in recovery, we, we're rule breakers. We like to break the rules. We like to right. kind of you carve out our own path. So it's neat to, you know, to to bang on a drum and, and say, well, this is my music therapy. This is my music meditation. Um, and then additionally, I'll, I'll just add on that uh, guided meditations are great for people looking for some literally some guidance where they they are not able to figure out or haven't yet find a way found a way to do their own type of meditation. So there's so many apps and websites and recordings that are available today. Where right, and you teachers, do you have an app, uh, a meditation app, or I, I uh, not my own app, but I have some meditations on. Um, it's an app called Insight Timer. They have yeah. uh, it's free, and they have so many free meditations by so many amazing teachers. I have some stuff on there, and uh, that's a great starting point. YouTube is great. There's so much stuff out there. Um, and then and also the way you started, which was the buddy system. Where yeah, find you, find you someone else. It. So you're showing up with someone, accountability, and and, and also the, um, you know, the fact that you're going on the journey together. Yeah, because I have noticed over the years, especially the last ten years or so, mindfulness and meditation have become really popular, which is great. It's amazing. And so there are meditation studios these days. I live in Southern California, and so we have there's meditation studios in the area. Yoga studios have separate meditation classes where you do it in groups. And it is a lot easier to do in groups where you, it's actually more fun because it's a collective energy that's cultivated where um, the whole room changes. The atmosphere, the aura, the energy of the room just changes when you have 10, 15, 20 people all just coming home to themselves. Uh, it's powerful. You really start to feel it's palpable. Um, yeah, so yeah. that's another possibility. So before um, you take us out with a guided meditation, um, one last question we ask all our guests, which is, what is the best lesson you've learned in sobriety and how did it help you? Wow. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is just gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think personally, I've seen a lot over the years. I've been to many, many meetings, 12-step meetings and some other meetings and I've seen a lot of people, um, for whatever reason, don't get a chance to hang on to their recovery, their yeah. sobriety, and it's unfortunate. And um, I've been working in the, uh, the field of addiction treatment recovery for a long time, and I've seen the same thing. And so every day that I heard a guy years ago, he said, if you're above ground, sucking air and sober, that's a good day. <laughs> it, it really hit me that if you're yeah. alive and you're sober, um, it's a miracle. And so gratitude, I think, um, just being grateful each day that I get to do this. I don't got to stay sober. I, no one's forcing me to do this. Right. It's a blessing. I get to stay sober by whatever, you know, cosmic lottery ticket that I might have won. <laughs> or, maybe it was karma in the past. Um, based yeah, on my track record, you know, this, this shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't be talking about meditation. I shouldn't be sober this many years. I have a daughter, you know, at home. I, you know, I get to be a parent today. I get to work in treatment. I get to help people. I'm just grateful. I'm so grateful. Um, 
That's a great lesson. And, and, you know, I like the, that um, I get to thing because I, I changed my thinking on that as well. You know, when you, 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 you wake up and you're like, Oh my God, I have to do this. And I've got to do this. I've got to, I've got to deal with that. And it's like, no, I get to do this. I get to do that. And I get to do that unpleasant task uh, so that I can make money or so that I can, you know, continue my relationship with this person, et cetera. So I like that. So, um, Brian, will you lead us all in um, a two-minute guided meditation? Sure. Yeah. For anyone who's watching this, sitting somewhere at home, uh, settle in. If you're driving and listening to this, please don't close your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep driving your car and maybe listen to this later when you pull over. Uh, for, for the rest of us, let's just find a comfortable seat. So whatever that means to you, if you're sitting in a chair, then Settle into the chair. Close the eyes. Start to bring your attention to your breath. Notice the inhale and the exhale. As you breathe consciously, begin to relax the body. Relax the shoulders. Relax the jaw. Relax the muscles across the forehead. Continue to breathe with awareness as you continue to soften the physical body. Will allow you to anchor your awareness in the present moment. The eyes still closed. Bring your awareness back to where you are now. Whether you're sitting in an office, in your house, at work, you're in a chair, seated on the ground. Come back physically. Take an inhale together, present moment. Exhale, let it go. Wonderful moment. And gently blink the eyes open. Come on back. Notice if you feel lighter, the mind is a little more quiet. Usually after meditation, if we look around, the things we see look different, the colors, the shapes. It's true. That's great. You know, um, something, I, I live in New York and it's um, on a busy street and it can be noisy here. And uh, so when I meditate, what I started to do, and I used to get annoyed by this, by the noises, you know, the sirens, the sound of a plane, um, a truck. And, and I thought rather than fight it, and I did it here, I, I put it on mute. So, so I didn't disturb our listeners with any of those noises. Um, but, you know, I try to imagine my mind just kind of, um, going out of my body and and traveling freely 
And so when I hear the noises, rather than fight it, I just imagine I'm my I'm hooking on to that siren and taking the journey, or then I'm on the plane and, and and taking. So rather than fight it, I just I just kind of go with it, and which which allows me to um, free up the mind. Uh, ironic. Absolutely, yeah. I think most of us, myself included, I'll hear a noise, and then it, my initial reaction is, "Oh man, that's going to ruin my meditation." Mm -hmm. I wish it was quiet. And that attachment to needing quiet, or that expectation that this was supposed to be a quiet room, that's going to create a lot of tension. And what you just shared is an advanced practice where you actually use the noises, you use these things as these seeming obstacles, as teaching moments where if you can make peace with a plane or a car or whatever it is, you'll be so powerful out in the world, nothing's going to bother you. That's the neatest thing is if you can, you know, make peace with your, your neighbor <laughs> banging on your door and you're meditating, then the next time you go out in the world and someone's you know, bothering you, it, it won't really have the same effect because you've already figured out how to just deal with stuff as it comes up. That's yeah. great. It's about acceptance, right? Yeah. Accepting those noises, they're present, can't do anything about them, but go with them. So, um, well, and, and it, it was an absolute pleasure uh, having you on. Brian and um and I love the guided meditation and maybe we'll have to bring you back um for more of that um because you got me to meditate for the first time in several <laughs> weeks so and reminded me that I I um I need it and I enjoy it and um uh it's um it's sustaining you know um so Anyway, to all our listeners, thank you for your continued support. Visit us on SoberPodcast.com and all places where you find major podcasts. Leave us a review. Sign up for our mailing list. You will also find the contact information in the show notes for our celebra sober celebrity. Brian, um, I am your host, Jamie Brickhouse. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram and Facebook, where I tell a true story in high heels every day. I am signing out from the Sober Podcast. Tune in for another show next week.